and welcome to this month's tutorial that is the Blooming Lotus Square, a brand new square in the What Were You Thinking game family. We have done four prior and we have also one outsource that someone else has done that is absolutely amazing. You can see all about it on our homepage sistersinstitch.com and this time for this square, I actually teamed up with the mandala queen of all, Inas from Inas Crafts. She has designed so many beautiful mandalas and yeah, it was just such a treat to play around with her and see where it would take us. Which was this. <laughs> so this is a larger size square than our others in the series. This measure is actually 25 by 25 centimeters unblocked. So it's quite big. It's We have still used the same yarn. We have used the same sized hook. And yeah, we just, the design did not fit a 20 by 20 centimeters. So it had to be a 25. And I love it too bit. So I hope you do. Two. How we have designed this is, as the game says, you do one round, then the other one you are working with do the next, and then you do the third, and then she does the fourth, and so on and so on. And that is exactly what happens here. So we have actually recorded the pattern just the way we designed it. So we are going back and forth, we are building the square from the behind, we are doing the flower as we go, and yeah, you'll see. It will be a crochet adventure treat for sure. <laughs> so uh, I just want to, before we begin, say thank you so much to Inas for playing this game with me. It was so much fun getting to know you. We did this almost <laughs> over an entire year, actually. We took some breaks. Life came in between, but here we are now and we have it finished and ready for you to play around. So just so you know, as always with Sisters and Stitch patterns, this is written in US terminology and you can find a written pattern for free on our homepage as well over at sistersinstitch.com. So without further ado, let's begin. To make this square, this very exact one, you will need six colors of yarn. I have used for this one a mix of Shapiest Katona and Yarn and Colors Must Haves. And I have listed each and every one in the written pattern and also down below here in the info box. So whatever you like to choose, whatever you like to choose, you can do. I have also done one with seven colors and Ina has also used seven colors for hers. So if you want to know just the right colorway for them, just follow the written pattern. And to go with the yarn, you need a hook and we have used a three millimeter. You also need a scissor to cut your ends off and a sewing needle to sew them in. And then you might want to add a few stitch markers for a few places. But that's really all that you need. So of course you don't have to use the same yarns as we do. We encourage you to use whatever you have at home or what you fancy to work with. This is Shepia Sweet Treat or Sugar Rush with a two millimeter hook and just the center flower and it's just so cute. I will use this as a little doily or maybe a little wall hanging for my daughter. And I have also just chosen to do one that is just the center of the flower and I will actually do a little bunting perhaps maybe with them. But I have so many ideas. I have done one in chunkier yarn that will be a pillowcase and everything. I will share those in a vlog further along. But just grab one kind of yarn you want and yeah, let's begin. So for round number one, we are beginning with the magic circle. You can of course use a chain circle if you prefer that. And then I'm simply going to chain one for the height and to add some thickness. Uh, this is not part of the pattern, but just for the height to begin, okay? So then we're doing 12 half double crochets into this circle. So one, two half double crochets, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ooh, wobbly, <laughs> 10, 11, and 12. So I'm just gonna do a quick shake because I lost myself there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Perfect. So go ahead and close the magic circle. 
And then as I'm going to continue on with the same color for round number two, I'm simply going to slip stitch into the very first stitch, not the chain that added the height, but to the actual half double crochet that begun all things. So go ahead and do that or do an invisible join to the second stitch if you are changing your colors. And meet me up for round number two. So I actually went ahead and hid my end on the back side just working through these sections back and forth a few times so it doesn't hang in the way while showing you round number two. So what I do is we are doing a double crochet three cluster which means three double crochets work together into the same stitch and I always begin with a standing stitch you can of course start with a chain uh, if you want to but I'm just pulling a loop up going around and to the back grabbing the yarn pulling it around and back to the front and if I were to do a normal double crochet now I would just yarn over and pull through these two loops but I'm not doing that because we're doing a cluster so I'm just grabbing the yarn and going back into the same stitch pulling up a loop and going through two loops leaving me with three loops on the hook and then yarn over go back into the same and finish the last half finished double crochet so now you should have four loops on your hook just yarn over and pull through all four of them and there is our little cluster it's so cute so now chain two and then we're repeating this for all stitches around so 12 times in total so just do your three double crochet cluster just doing three half finished double crochets four loops on the hook yarn over and pull through all four chain two and just repeat so one half finished double crochet two half finished double crochets and three half finished double crochets yarn over and pull through all four loops on the hook and chain two so it will begin to look like this so keep on all the way around and join me for closing this round okay okay so i just finished my last repeat of a cluster and chain two so what i will do now is simply cut off the yarn and close with an invisible join to the second stitch which in this case is the first chain in one repeat so i have just threaded and this is the cluster stitch and these are the two chains so i'm going in through the front loop of the first and through the second top loop there and just going through the back loop of our last chain to make a fake head like that and then I'm going back down into the cluster Boop. let's see if it works there we go just make sure it doesn't show on the front as you can tell like this don't pull too much because then it will look off so just just enough <laughs> lagom in the Swedish times not too much not too little just the perfect amount <laughs> that you need <laughs> so there we go just hiding those a few times in the body of the cluster and then snip it off and prepare for round number three okay see you soon there we go so for round number three we are simply keeping on with the simple things so we're doing a front post single crochet around each cluster and chaining four in between so we are not touching the chain two spaces here we are leaving them for now and just focus on really making these clusters pop so the beginning it can feel a little bit wonky but it's just fine i promise just do a front post single crochet around the first cluster and chain four one two three and four and then skipping the chain two space and doing a front post single crochet around the next just placing it around the head and not over the head <laughs> there we go and just i'm just keeping these tight so i'm tightening my front post single crochets because i want them to stay in place no wiggle room here <laughs> so we are using these as anchors later so 
One, two, three, four chains and a front post single crochet around the next cluster. Preferably. <laughs> there we go. And chain four. So this is all you do 12 times in a total. So do that and meet me up for closing. Okay? So I have done a front pair single crochet around all my clusters and added a chain four in between. So to close this round, it's really simple. We're simply placing a slip stitch into that very first front pair single crochet. Easy peasy. So it should look like this. You should not have touched the chain twos. And yeah, just created some lovely things to work in. So meet me up for round number four. So for round number four, I'm actually keeping, I haven't sewn in the end yet because we are doing this round also in linen, if you are going the same as me. And what you will do now is working four double crochets into each skipped chain two space from the previous round, okay? So here. Uh, and what I do, I will actually just simply chain one and then go back. You can, of course, fasten off the other one, but yeah, <laughs> I'm just cheating a little bit. It will not be showing, okay? <laughs> so just go ahead and work behind your chain fours into each chain two space of round two. So one, two, three, four, and four. I'm getting a little skein here, <laughs> jumping in to the frame. And just, yeah, this is a really simple and calm round. So, double crochets for the win. We are skipping every other stitch. You are only, only working around the chain two spaces, okay? Nothing else, just skipping the rest. And if you want to know the exact stitch count and everything, it's all in the written pattern that is available on our homepage, shisistinstitch.com for free. So just go and double check there if you want to. But I think you will be doing fine. So you need four times 12 sets of double, four double crochets. So here we go. So keep on doing that and meet me up to close, okay? Have fun. So there we go, we have 12 times four double crochets all around. It should look like this. <laughs> so what you do now is simply snip off the yarn and join with an invisible joint to in the second stitch, the chain that we used to a little bridge, don't count, okay? So into that stitch. And yeah, meet me up for the next round. So we are already at round number five. And for this round, we are actually working in these double crochets that we just did and around the chain four spaces from round number three that has no stitches around them. So we are going into them, leaving the front post single crochet alone. Don't touch that one, okay? So just find yourself a place where you wish to start. And I'm just folding my work a little bit to the back and into this, or around the chain four space, I'm doing my first three double crochet cluster. So three half finished double crochets around the space, four loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all four, and then chain two. And now we are repeating that one more time. So we are doing a three double crochet cluster around the same chain four space, with our color C, if I forgot to mention that. <laughs> Just remembered. <laughs> this is a light pink. It contrasts really, really well against these muted colors, so it really makes it pop. Yeah, so we have one cluster, chain two, one cluster, chain two, and now we're doing one more cluster. So three clusters should be around this chain four space in total. Okay? Like that. Really, really cute. So, Good to know is that we're skipping all of these four double crochets that are placed right behind it, okay? So if you pull this through the front, you can tell very clearly which double crochets belongs to which chain two space. So we are skipping those and going into the first of the next set, okay? The next set of four double crochets. And we are making a single crochet into the next four stitches. So one, two, three, and four like that okay 
So we are skipping the next chain 4 space and going directly into the next. So just be aware of where you are working and you'll be fine. This is a really relaxing round, actually. So just repeat what you did in this one. So three half finished double crochets into a cluster, chain two. And then the same, three double crochets work together around the chain four space and chain two and the very last one there we go two and three yarn over and pull through and then double shake one two three four you should skip the next one should be the first double crochet of the next set and just go ahead and work one single crochet over those next four stitches Okay, so simply repeat this all the way around, working in every other chain four space, skipping every other set of four double crochets. So do that and meet me up to close. Okay, good luck. Okay, so I'm at my very last set of four single crochets, like that. And I will go ahead and join with an invisible join to the second stitch, which is the first chain here. But I just wanted to say, you can always like double check, just make sure that you skipped four stitches, worked in four, skipped four, worked in four and everything, because you want the symmetry to be right. And just double check one, two, three, four, five, six loose chain four spaces left because we're working in those again later on we are using as many stitches and spaces as we can me and Inas <laughs> this is a really fun one I promise you this is such a fun adventure and yeah I hope you enjoy it so far so yeah fast enough with an invisible join to the second stitch and meet me up for round number six well done we are getting there look we are getting close we are actually like that <laughs> so for this round we are using old rows or i am and this will be like the petals of our inner flower to our larger flower and if you would like to you can actually just make this section and have a beautiful little mandala flower but of course we are going to continue all the way through so grab your yarn and hook and let's begin Okay, so this is quite a busy round, but just take it nice and slow and you'll be absolutely fine, okay? So I'm just gonna catch my own yarn here. <laughs> and for this round, we are beginning in any first chain two space between two clusters. So we have this one here that works absolutely perfect. So I will begin with a standing stitch and do three double crochets around this one. So one, two, and three and now we are going to do one front post double crochet chain two one front post double crochet around this center cluster that we made so just go ahead and do one front post double crochet chain two and then do another front post double crochet I'm placing mine underneath the first one so I have one there and one there, but you can do whatever suits you the best, okay? So then we are going directly into the next chain two space and work three double crochets around it. So one, two, and three. A lot of stitches in a small space, but it will all be fine, I promise. So around the next cluster, we are doing a front post half double crochet. So just yarn over and pull through all three. There we go. And now we are doing something really fun. We are going to skip these four stitches that were the single crochets of the next round. And then we are directly going into these leftover chain four spaces. So we are doing a cluster, a three double crochet cluster. So just go ahead and do that. Just do three half finished double crochets yarn over and pull through all four loops and then do a front post half double crochet around the next cluster 
Okay, so don't pay attention to the single crochets left behind. They are gonna sit there and be used for later, okay? And now I got a knot on my hook. So this is the repeat, three double crochets around the next chain two space, one front post double crochet, chain two, front post double crochet around the center cluster, three double crochets around the next chain two space, a front post half double crochet around the next cluster, skip the four single crochets behind and work a three double crochet cluster around that skipped chain four space from round number three. And then we are going back up and doing a half front post half double crochet around the next cluster and so on. So, so just take your time, take it nice and slow. And if you want to check out the written instructions, uh, I think this is quite a lovely round. It turns out so, so, so beautifully with all these flowers and clusters. So yeah, hope you'll have lots of fun. So do that and then finish with an invisible join to the second stitch and meet me up for the next part. So there we go. It looks so cute already. So you can just use this one as for buntings or decorations that it is or maybe a small, very small, depending on what yarn you're using, coaster or something. It's just so, so, so cute. But if you are closing it, remember to do round number seven also, which is the next one, because now we are going to surface slip stitch around here, okay? Just to make it really, really pretty. So yeah, grab your color C, which is light pink for me, and let's do some surfacing. <laughs> okay, so I just have to say, when I sent this round to Inas, which is the surface slip stage, she was cracking up. <laughs> she was like, it must be kidding. But yes, this is my trick when I do a what way thinking square. I leave little spaces to just use whenever I don't want to continue on. So for this time, I just, I didn't know what to do after these gorgeous petals. I didn't want to destroy this flower. So I decided to use my, my free card, which is <laughs> just working surface slip stitches around the center. And I said, just more ha 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 ha. <laughs> Have fun with that one, Inas. You can continue on your gorgeous, gorgeous round here. Um, and I will just worry about the center. <laughs> so <laughs> this is what's so funny when working without any other things. Oh, sorry, we're not doing that. Uh, with any sayings before, we are just surprising each other with each and every round. And so, yeah, this was my way of surprising her. So for this round, less talking, more crocheting, I know. We are jumping in to work around the lower part of the head of the 12 half double crochets we placed here. So what I do is actually I just push, I find a little spot. If you separate here, you can tell that the clusters has made a little bit of the work for us. So I just go into one of those spaces around there. So I'm actually quite, maybe I'm actually crocheting it into the, the half double crochet. I don't know, but just find these little gaps. And just grab the loop from the behind, the slip knot. And then don't tighten it too much. Just let it be a little bit loose. That will help. I keep the starting end with my finger, just pulling up the loop ever so slightly, just peeking through. Don't worry if it peeks up too much. You can just pull it back, okay, if you want to. And then I go down into the next little gap and grabbing the working yarn that is placed behind, pulling up a loop and pulling through. So it's just a slip stitch. It's not fancier than that. So just go down into the next space or any space that you see fit, grab the yarn from the behind and pull through and make a slip stitch. And just go around. If you don't get 12, it doesn't matter. You just want it to be an even circle around, okay? So just finding your little gaps that you can be working in. And we are actually, I'm sorry, we are not doing 12. We are doing 11 because the last one is a fake one like an invisible join. Just be aware, I'm, I'm crocheting through a camera right now, which is a little bit trickier than doing it sitting in my couch. But I'm just trying to get all these slip stitches about the same size and about the same tension, but it could be really, really beautiful just to go with the flow and have it a little bit wonky. But now that we are around almost, I'm doing one last here, 
Let's see how many I got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. You see, I will get 13. <laughs> so what I will do now is I will make sure that the knot from the slip knot is to the behind, to the back side of your work, and then cut off a little bit more than you used to, or should to, when you are doing a normal round. Just gently pull it up so you get it to the right side. And now we are doing a little bit of magic. We are doing, we are using the invisible join to make sure that no one can tell. So we are going, we are going to create this loop pattern over here too by simply going through the front loop here and the back loop there. And as we would with an invisible join, just pull slightly, go through the back loop, the center here, and to the back side. Ta-da! Isn't it neat? I just love this trick. So what I will do now is simply taking my thread and working it in in this section too. Just ever so slightly, making sure that it doesn't show on the front. And just go back and forth a few times. This is not a holding place. This is just a decorative setting. So I'm just, I'm just doing like this. And then I do the same for this one as well and fastening off and then we are done with this little section. So do that and yeah, meet me up for round number eight. Okay, have fun. I still can't get over how adorable this one looks. I mean, come on. Yeah, so, so, so cute. I will actually, I might need to do a little bunting or mandala or something with it because it's just... Yeah, it's adorable. So after leaving Inas on the spot here with <laughs> not continuing on where she thought I would, uh, she came up with this really good solution. I knew I could count on you, Inas. Uh, so we're actually going back to the back side, flipping our work, and then we're working in these. Do you remember that we skipped four double crochets on round four? This is where we are going to work. So not in the single crochets, but the double crochets. So you will find, you can work, count from the back, one, two, three, four. This should only be four, but just to make sure that you are going into the right spot. So into the first of these four, any set of four. So we are working behind the pedal. Sorry, forgot to mention that. I do, I'm just doing now. Flip the pedal forward and find the first double crochet of the four. And in that one, making two double crochets, okay? I'm doing my standing one. You can, of course, slip stitch and chain if you want to. So just two double crochets into the first, then one double crochet in the next two. So one and into the next two and then we are doing two double crochets into the last one here the last skipped of this set so clever enos this was <laughs> such a great idea now we are chaining three and we are skipping all of this and going right into the next set of four double crochets so just one two three four there we have the first one do two double crochets in that one one and two and then we are working one double crochet in the next two stitches one and two and then two double crochets into the last one one and two like that and then we are chaining three so go ahead and do this in all the sections behind and then close with an invisible join to the second stitch, okay? Which will be the second double crochet of this round. Okay, so for round number nine, we are working in these stitches that we just made and around these clusters for round number five, okay? So, no, sorry, six, <laughs> round number six. Oh, this was so confusing for the testers too. I kept on, when you're two people writing a pattern, it's so easy to get a little bit confused on which one is which. <laughs> Let me just say that. Thank you to all our amazing testers. You did such a wonderful job. This is like, yeah. So, <laughs> we 
are going to begin, I have my Khaleesi, and we are going to begin in the very first double crochet of last round. So just make one half double crochet in that. I'm using a standing one stitch. You can use slip stitch and chains if you want to. And then we're doing one half double crochet over the next five stitches too. So six half double crochets in total here, okay? We're just building some height on the place behind. And now what we are going to do is we're doing a front post double crochet around this cluster like that chaining three and then doing another front post double crochet around this one i think you might recognize this style okay <laughs> so we're skipping the chain three space and going back to our previous round and doing yeah one half double crochet over the next six stitches so a very nice and smooth round, okay? Just mind the tension and go ahead and do a front post double crochet around the next cluster here from round number six and then chain three and then another front post double crochet here, like that. So do that all the way around six times in total and join with an invisible join to the second stitch as always. Okay, so we are already at round number 10 and number 10 is actually this golden mustard as you can tell here. But I thought it would be fun to try something different. So for this square that I'm working on right now, my color E will not be mustard, it will actually be a gorgeous light crispy white or cream actually it's not crispy at all it's cream <laughs> but so yeah grab your color E whatever color of your choice there and let's begin okay so for this round we're actually working in stitches from the previous round only <laughs> and we are going to make half double crochets in these six that we did last time skipping the front post working around the chain three space and skipping the front post really really simple really really calm so grab your hook and yarn and begin with a standing half double crochet in any first half double crochet from the next round okay of the set of six and then just work one half double crochet in each so we are up to four five and then six like that and then we are going to skip the front post entirely and into the next one we are doing clusters again so work three half finished clusters sorry three half finished double crochets of course around this chain three space, four loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through, chain two, and then we are doing another cluster, exactly the same as the first, three double crochets work together around the same space, pull through, chain two, and then work our last one. Hmm, might we have done this before? Oh yes, we have, and it's amazing. I just love this repetition. Very, very calming. So now we are skipping the front post again, which is somewhat hidden here under all of our clusters and just doing the repeat once more. So a half double crochet over the next six stitches and then a cluster, chain two, cluster, chain two, cluster, skipping the front posts. So that's it. So just do that and yeah close with an invisible join to the second stitch and then dive right into round number 11 have fun so we are now at round number 11 and for this round we are going to amplify the clusters making sure that they are popping properly as they should and we're doing this kind of like spider-like leg section and yeah as I switched out my color for color F 
from mustard to cream. I'm also going to swap this one for a lighter, softer color. So this is actually birch, no, sorry, ekru, <laughs> ekru from Yarn and Colors. So I will add this into the pattern as well and into the beginning probably. So <laughs> I might not even have to say this, but uh, yeah, birch, really similar to cream, but it's not cream, okay? Let's begin. Okay, so we are doing quite a lot of things again in this round. Not that tricky, I promise, but just keep your stitch count and focus for this one, okay? So into any first chain two space of a cluster combination, work a standing double crochet, okay? Then chain two, and then work another double crochet around the same space, chain two again, and make a third and final double crochet around the same chain space. So it should consist of three double crochets with a chain two in between them, okay? And now we're doing a front post double crochet around the cluster you have here, like that. And then we're repeating this side into this chain space. So a double crochet, chain two, another double crochet, chain two and a double crochet and it's really important that you really make sure to make three double crochets around this chain space with two chains between them because otherwise it will be a bit tricky coming along further okay <laughs> so now we are doing a front post double crochet around the next cluster like that and then we're skipping the next stitch which was the first of the half double crochets here the six ones we have. So we're skipping that one and we're going into the second one immediately. But we're not going into the entire stitch, we're only doing in the back loop. So here's the front, here's the back loop, and if you turn your work a little bit towards the back, you see another little line there. There is the third loop. And I will show you, because we are doing back loop double crochets, and this is my trick. If you are to do only in the back loop, do you see? It's not as secured and anchored, it's just hanging there in mid-air. But if you go through the back loop and the third loop, it sticks. Stays in place and everything. So I'm choosing to work in both the back loop and the third loop. You can do as you please, but for me that works absolutely best and it holds in place better over time, okay? So we are skipping, going back to the beginning, we have done our front post double crochet, skipping the next stitch, and now we're making one back loop double crochet over the next four stitches, okay? So one, just showing you, going into both loop there, three, and four. Just like that. And now we are simply skipping the last half double crochet and working a front post double crochet around the next cluster. And that is the repetition. So we have a double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, front post double crochet around the center cluster, double crochet, chain two, double crochet, chain two, double crochet around the chain two space, one front post double crochet, skipping the next stitch, working one back loop double crochet over the next four stitches, skipping the next and then doing a front post double crochet. So you are repeating this for all these sections and then close with an invisible join to the second stitch, which is a chain this time. So just do that and meet me up for round number 12. So welcome back! For this round we are creating the base from which our puffs will sit on. Just grab your color A, which for me is this small, and then find any first back loop double crochet from the previous round. Okay, so I actually zoomed in a little bit so you can tell what I'm doing exactly. So you are working one single crochet in the next two stitches the first and the second one here, and then you're chaining two. 
And now we are simply going back to row round number six and doing a single crochet around that chain two space, okay? Like that. And then we're chaining two again and we are not skipping any stitches here. So we are actually going into simply the next double crochet there, which is the third one of the four and working a single crochet over the next two back loop double crochets. Simple as that. So the next thing is to do a front post single crochet around the next stitch, skipping the next, which is the normal double crochet. And around this chain two space, we are working three single crochets like that. And then we're skipping the center one and making three single crochets into the next chain two space. And then we're skipping the next double crochet and working a front post single crochet around the front post double crochet from the previous round. Like that. Skipping the next st stitch and you guessed right, three single crochets around the next chain two space. Skipping the next double crochet and working three single crochets around the next chain two space. Like that. Grabbing some more yarn and we are skipping the next stitch and around the front post double crochet we are working a front post single crochet. And that's it! It's really really simple. You work a single crochet of the next two stitches, chain two, single crochet in the next chain two space, back here chaining two and doing one single crochet over the next two stitches, front post single crochet around the front post, skipping the next stitch, working three single crochets in the chain space, skipping the next double crochet, three single crochets in the next chain space, skipping the next double crochet, front post single crochet around the front post double crochet, skipping the next stitch, three single crochets around the chain two space, skipping the next stitch, making three single crochets around the chain space, skipping the next stitch and doing a single crochet front post here. So easy peasy lemon breezy, just take it nice and slow and relax and enjoy this round and meet me up for the next one, okay? Have fun! So we are at round number 13 and for round number 13 as you can tell I took the liberty to crochet it up a little bit because I wanted to show you exactly what we are doing. We are going to begin around a front post single crochet in the middle of a panel and then we're working a lot of puffs, six to be in fact, and then we're working a front post treble three together over the front post double crochet from round 11 the single crochet from round 12 and the front post double crochet from the other round 11. And then we're chaining one and then we're continuing the same way as we went down the hill with puffs. So it's not as tricky as it looks. I promise you, if you just take it nice and slow and follow how I do it, you can do it too. So let's begin. So to start off, find yourself the front post single crochet on the middle of a pedal and then do a standing front post double crochet or a slip stitch front post thing with some chains, <laughs> whatever works. Okay, so after we have done that front post double crochet, we are going to work a puff stitch in each of these six single crochets that we made in the chain two spaces the previous round. So to make a puff, you yarn over and pull up a loop three times. Okay, so one, two, and three. You should now have seven loops on your hook. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you want it puffier, add some more yarn over pull ups, or if you want it thinner, which I don't think you want with three, <laughs> three yarn overs, just add or remove. That was what I was wanted to, going to say. So just yarn over and pull through all seven loops on your hook and then close with a chain. That is part of the stitch and not a stitch on its own, okay? So it's just a puff, simply a puff. 
And if you feel like these are a little bit tricky to get firm and steady, just go down a hook size. I usually do that, but for this time I'm keeping my three millimeter, but I would suggest to go down to a two and a half millimeter just to get them really firm and then switch to your three millimeter for the other stitches, okay? So just keep on doing this for the next five stitches. We are yarning over and pulling up a loop three times to make a path. Grab the yarn and pull through all seven loops and then close with the chain. That's all there is to it. So there we go. I don't know about you, but I just love puff stitches. I think they are so pretty and so full of texture and calmness and smoothness and there's something sophisticated about them. I, I just love them. They look like little cushions. Really, really cute. So, and in this color, this mauve, which is one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, they look like little tiny chocolate bits or something. I don't know. I just love it. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five. We have one more to go before we are doing the treble. Three together, front post. Two and three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, it looked like I dropped a loop, but I didn't. So, yeah. So now what we are doing is locating the front post double crochet that are placed around the cluster. The single crochet, not the chain two spaces here, but single crochet and the front post double crochet around the next cluster. And then we are yarning over twice and the key to making this front post treble three together really good is just keeping the tension. So just take it nice and slow and hold firmly to your thread. Go around the front post double crochet Pull through two loops and pull through two loops. Two loops on your hook. Yarn over twice. Go around the body of the single crochet. Make sure that your yarn is below the head of the stitch and not above it. Because if it goes above it, it will go right up around those chain twos instead, okay? So pull through two, pull through two. As you can tell, I have quite the tension here. So just yarn over twice and go around the next front post double crochet. Yarn over two, pull through two, I mean, and pull through two. So in the end you should have one loop for each treble and then one from the start here. So four loops in total, yarn over and pull through two, all four, and chain one to close. And that is a stitch. <laughs> but it should look something like this. As you can tell, I'm just pulling this back so you can see, it's a little bit gappy here, but don't worry, we are gonna fix that in an upcoming round, okay? So just make sure you have these three lengths over here. If you feel like they are too long and too bulky, just do a front post double crochet around them. Uh, and if you feel like it's really, really tricky, just take it slow, rewind this video and watch it again and just follow as simple as you can, okay? So that's it. And if you feel like this is slipping up around the head of the stitch and not around the body of the single crochet, just grab the two chain two spaces and pull them to a straight line and it will fall down in place, I promise. So try that <laughs> if it's messing with you, okay? So after we have done a front post double crochet, six puffs and the front post treble three together and chain one, we are going into the next single crochet of the other side of the pedal. So we are just simply repeating what we just did. Uh, times three yarn over, pull up a loop kind of puff. Preferably without splitting the yarn. <laughs> Let's just do that one over. Okay, so there we go. Two and three. And you go through the stitch. And close with the chain. So this is the exact repeat and you're just doing this for all sides, nice and slow, stitch by stitch. And then you will have an amazing base to build the top layer of your pedal on. 
And I was a little bit worried that Ina's what she were going to say when I sent this round to her because I didn't know how she felt about puffs. And I mean, they're 12 per pedal <laughs> and there are six pedals. So they're quite a lot. But it turned out she loves puffs as well. So that's really, really good. <laughs> so two puff lovers came together and yeah, this was so much fun. So just take it nice and slow and chain one to close. And now we are back again. So I don't have that much left. I actually only have one side left to do, but you will have six more sides to do. So just keep on going around and around and then close with an invisible join to the second stitch. And for the next part, this was so funny because we didn't know how to, to continue on. I'm just gonna double check so I'm not saying anything wrong here. Right, so we were a little bit <laughs> afraid of what we were to do next. So we will now begin to build on the back side uh, the squaring out sections, okay? So we are about to start all of this. And it's quite easy, it's quite calm, and after have doing this, these quite busy rounds, it's kind of a nice break, okay? So we are not finishing the pedals just yet. They are coming along later. So yeah, finish the round and grab the color you want for your back piece. Okay, see you soon. So it's time to start building a square. So for round number 14, we are actually going back to these skipped half double crochets, the first and the last uh, of a set of six that we made in round number 10. So we did six half double crochets and then we did these clusters and then we did six half double crochets. And for round 11, we actually skipped the first and the last of the half double crochets, do you remember? So find these, either go and put a little stitch mark in them so they are easy to find or just, yeah, look for them. Well, we work. So. I'm actually grabbing the same yarn as I did the clusters. So this is my color E, which is the cream. So I will begin to the right of a petal. You can begin at the left if you want to, but I always find it easier to begin from here. So just flip it over and find that all lonely little half double crochet and work a standing single crochet in it. There we go. And then chain five. So one, two, Oops, three, four, and five. And if you feel like your work are pulling towards you, just add a chain, okay? Or take away a chain if it is too loose because we want this to be quite straightforward on the back because it will hold a lot of stitches later, okay? So then we go ahead and find our next skipped half double crochet. Again, working from the back, just go into that stitch and make a single crochet. Chain five, three, four, and five, and find the next one. And we will repeat this for all skipped half double crochets. So all the way around, we will have six chain five spaces and 12 single crochets. Easy peasy, lemon breezy. I'll just zoom out and show you how it looks on the back. So it looks just like this. And as I said, if you feel like they are pulling too much, add a chain. Or if you feel like they are way too loose, just remove a chain. The number of chains are not important, it's the tension that is, okay? So keep on doing that for all the skipped half double crochets on each side of a pedal and meet me up to close. So there we go, I will just join with an invisible join to the second stitch which is the first chain here and then i will go ahead and find my way into a thicker sized place and just hit the ends in there but you can also wait with fastening off until you have the next round which gives more yarn up here to work in so just do whatever feels the best for you i'm sure you can also do just a slip stitch join here so it's always a little bit tricky when there is a lot of loose, <laughs> loose stitches in a piece to really fasten off well. So yeah, just a little tip. That's how I will do it. I will join to the second stitch and find a better place to hide my ends in a similar color of yarn or the same if I can. So that's it. 
and then we are beginning with the height so I will pick up my color G and yeah meet you up for round number 15. So with the last light of today shining in through the windows we are about to begin round number 15 and for this round we are working solely in the chain five spaces that we just created we are skipping the single crochets and just working around these and for this square I have used white as my color G or do you know what should I really do this one okay so sorry for that I just decided that seeing it through the camera lens this will be too harsh so I'm actually going to use keep on using my cream my color E so to begin this round we are finding a chain five space anyone will do and around it we will work in front we have the work still in front of us just pulling a pedal down working behind it and begin by making a standing double crochet and then we make two more around the same chain space so three double crochets chain one and work three more double crochets around the same chain space and three and then we chain one so this is actually the entire repeat of this round you do three double crochets around the chain five space chain one make three more double crochets around the same chain space chain one skipping the single crochet and then just do the same in the next so one two and three chain one one two and three chain one don't miss those chain ones okay we need those <laughs> to keep a little bit of a flexibility so just keep on going working three double crochets chain one three double crochets chain one around each chain space and then you don't actually have to cut off your, the yarn if you're gonna keep on using the same color so just wait there for me just do a slip stitch in that case into the first stitch of this round which was the double crochet and then we can begin with the standing stitch for the next one or if you want to change change it up just do so okay so have fun and see you in a bit Okay, so I will now chain one to just get the height. This does not count as a stitch on its own. And then I'm doing a single crochet in the very first double crochet of a set of six. So just do that first and then one single crochet in the next two stitches too. And around the chain one space. And now we are repeating that one more time. So one single crochet in the next three stitches, one, two and three and then around the chain space two like that and then we are doing a half double crochet in the next three stitches so one two and three and then we're doing a double crochet around the chain one space followed by a double crochet into the next stitch and now we're going up a level so to a treble yarn over twice pull through two pull through two pull through two and then do another treble in the next stitch one two three chain two skip the next chain one space and now we're mirroring what we just did slightly here so into the next stitch make a treble and in the one after that so we have two trebles on each side this will be our new corner so in the next stitch a double crochet and you guessed it around the chain one space we're doing a double crochet and over the next three stitches we are working one half double crochet in each so one two and three and then we're working one single crochet around the chain one space so that is the first 
corner side. I will do one side more with you and then I will let you keep on going on your own. So what we will do now is working one single crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, and three. And around the chain one space. And then we're repeating it. So one single crochet over the next three stitches. So one, two, and three. Just gonna untangle my yarn a bit. And then one single crochet around the chain one space, followed by a half double crochet in the next three stitches. So one, two, and three. And then we're doing a double crochet around the chain one space, followed by a double crochet in the next stitch. And now we're making a treble over the next two stitches. So one, or in the next two stitches. I don't know why I keep saying, <laughs> doing like an increase, I don't know. Don't do that. Just put one in each stitch, please. Chain two, and then skip the next chain one space. Yarn over twice and do a treble in the next stitch. And the treble in the next. A double crochet in the next stitch. And a double crochet around the chain one space. Followed by a half double crochet over the neck in the next three stitches. See, I, I'm getting there. <laughs> there we go. And then finally a single crochet around the next chain one space. Like that. So now you should have, as you can tell, two corners already made. So go ahead and finish the repetition. So you get all the way around and get four corners. And the corners are the chain two spaces, as you guessed. So yeah, do that and meet me up for round number 17. And oh, note that you, if you are keep on using the same color, just slip stitch into the first stitch, okay? Otherwise, fasten off with an invisible join to the second stitch. Have fun! Okay, so for this round, which is round 17, I got a little bit carried away, <laughs> so I actually begun. Uh, sorry, <laughs> but what you do is you slip stitch to close the round and then you chain one to get the height and then you simply work one half double crochet in each stitch till you come to the corner. And in the corner you make two half double crochets around the chain space, chain two, and then two more half double crochets. And then you will be working one half double crochet all the way to the next corner. So 23 in total for the sides and then a corner consisting of two half double crochets, chain two, two half double crochets. Okay? So do that and then close with a slip stitch to the first stitch to continue on with round number 18, which is also in color G. So yeah, have fun. So for round number 18, we are kind of repeating round 17, but this time we are using double crochets. So just begin with a standing stitch and make one double crochet in each stitch across until you get to the corner. And around that corner chain two space, make two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. And then continue making one double crochet until the next corner. And that will be 27 stitches in total, okay? So just 27 stitches with double crochets, two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets and repeat. So do that and then it's time to fasten off this yarn and begin with another color, okay? See you then! Now it's time to continue on with the pedals. So for round number 19 you need to decide what color you want these outer petal shapes to be. And I will go with my color C again, which is this light pink, and do exactly the same here. So grab your yarn and let's begin. To begin this round, we need to find ourselves a center front post double crochet, which is placed in the center of any petal here, as you can tell. So grab your hook and put your slip knot on there because we are beginning with a standing front post single crochet. Put your hook around the stitch, grab the yarn and pull up a loop 
and pull through your bow flips just like that making sure it's not tangled or anything and then just continue on to the next puff and do a front post single crochet around that one too okay and now we are doing a single crochet in the space between the puffs which is actually the closing chain uh, that we did for the puffs but they are not stitches so going around the space is what I will be saying now okay and this is all we are going to do we are going to do one front post single crochet around each puff and the single crochet in between all the way down to the other side okay like that front post single crochet single crochet in the space between the puffs or around sorry we are not going into the stitches we're going around so around the chain one space here that is the closing chain and then around the front post the puff with the front post <laughs> there we go and just do that all the way down to the very last puff okay and we're placing a front post single crochet around that one too and we're actually doing something similar now because now we are doing a little bit of a tidy up you see this front post treble that we made in round number 13 we are actually going to tidy it up and pull these loops that are drooping <laughs> we are pulling them all up so it's nice and cute so what you will do to make this front post single crochet three together is you go put, place your hook around the first leg make sure that you're underneath that little section that you want to pull up grab the yarn and pull up a tight loop and then you repeat for the next one as I said make sure that that one goes over pull up a loop go under the next leg grab the yarn and pull up another loop so now you should have four tight loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all four just like that and there we have it easy peasy right so what you will do now is simply continue on with what we did prior so we are doing a front post single crochet around the next puff as well so it's quite tight here now we are tightening up these sections and then we're doing a single crochet in the space between and then we're doing a front post so this is a total of five times just keep on going front post single crochet around the space between and front post single crochet in the space between and then again front post and the single crochet in the space between and here is the key piece to to make sure because here is where you can forget yourself as we have done from down here up here is work every other front post and single crochet front post single crochet but for these three stitches the puff before the double crochet front post double crochet and the puff after we are doing all of these in front posts so no single crochets in between okay so just do a front post around that last and to continue on with the repeat do a front post here too and around the next one and then you do a single crochet in the space between okay so this is the only tricky part I think is to remember to to not carry on and doing single crochets in between because then you will have two more stitches than you need okay so just take it nice and slow every other you begin up here with a front post single crochet a front post single crochet around the next stitch one single crochet around the chain space one front post single crochet and so on all the way down until the very last puff where you end up with a front post single crochet and then you do a front post single crochet three together over the legs as i showed you and if you want to check it again just pause the video rewind and check that section once more okay do that all the way around and meet me to close so we have just finished our final front post single crochet and to close this round it's really as simple as making a slip stitch into the first front post single crochet that we did if you want to you can always close with an invisible join and then start with the same color yarn again but to save a little bit of sewing in ends and such <laughs> i'm just gonna continue on as is okay so 
to make sure you can always go back to the written pattern that is linked down here below to just make sure that you have the right stitch count and everything but I can just say for this section for one pedal you need 13 front post single crochets around the puffs and the double crochets and then 10 single crochets five on this side and five on that side in between the puffs and then a front post treble three together per repetition okay so that is what you need to double check that you have and then we can continue on with round number 20 with the same color as we have on right now so for this round we are mainly going to work in our previous work round which is round number 19 with one exception and this is only for the beginning we are doing a front post V stitch one could say around this front post double crochet from round number 13 okay so other than that we are not working in round 13 only in round 19 but to begin since I did a slip stitch I want some flexibility to build up the height I chain one this is not part of the pattern this is just a trick to get the height right okay and if you have closed it with an invisible join and starting again start with the standing front post double crochet okay so just go around that same stitch that we began last round <laughs> and then make a front post double crochet. Chain two and then go around the same front post again. I'm going below my front post that I just did. Lots of front posts here now <laughs> and just work a second front post double crochet. So it looks like this, our little V section. And now we are not skipping any stitches, so we are locating the first front post single crochet placed around the puff and work a half double crochet into that one. Like that. And the same for, goes for the next four stitches. So we are working five half double crochets in total. So three, four, and five. Like that. I think I need to zoom out a little bit. So there we go. One, two, three, four, five half double crochets. And then we're doing five single crochets, okay? So one, two, three, Let's see there is the next one I'm looking through the camera and crocheting that is not always the easiest thing to do <laughs> let me just say that so there we go five half double crochets five single crochets and now after grabbing myself some more yarn <laughs> I'm going to do a slip stitch into the next stitch which is the last front post single crochet down here and then I'm actually going to skip the next stitch which is our three stitches work together and just do a slip stitch in the next front post single crochet like that easy peasy so now we are just mirroring this side so a single crochet in the next five stitches one two three four and five there we go and then five half double crochets or one half double crochet in the next five stitches <laughs> to be correct there we go three four and five so as you can tell this is a really really simple one when you come back here you just do your front post double crochet chain two front post double crochet and repeat the exactly same thing so yeah do that and meet me up for round number 21 round number 21 we are using our lovely little cream again and this is again a super simple one we are simply building some height here so begin in any corner chain two space from round 18 and then do a standing half double crochet followed by another double half double crochet <laughs> there we go chain two and then work two half double crochets more into this same chain space like that and now we are simply working one half double crochet in each stitch across which will leave us with 31 half double crochets here now and then you will be on the other side 
<laughs> so just simply repeat this for all sides. So two half double crochets, chain two, two half double crochets around the corner chain space, and then one half double crochet over the next 31 stitches. And then you close with an invisible join to the second stitch, which is the second half double crochet. So do that and meet me up for round number 22. And now we are already up to this section, as you can tell. So we are grabbing our color B, which for me is linen, and we're doing these cluster sections. So it's really important that you have, in fact, 35 half double crochets in total with the corner included. So 31 over the length and then two times two half double crochets per corner with a chain two, of course. So just double check that you have the right amount of stitches because otherwise this will not work out, okay? So do that and let's begin. So we are beginning with our color B in any chain two space from our four corners. And around it we will make our first standing double crochet followed by two more directly after. So we are having ourselves three double crochets then we are chaining two, and then we are doing three more around the same chain space. So six double crochets in there in total with two chain stitches in between the sets of three. I hope that made the sense. <laughs> okay, so what you will do next is, since we have already filled up quite a lot of space, we are skipping the next two stitches, which are the ones we placed around the chain space the last time. So into the third half double crochet here, we are working a two double crochet cluster. So that means doing a half finished double crochet and then going in and doing another half finished double crochet with three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. And then we are chaining one and then we're repeating the same again because we're doing these lovely little heart shaped sections. So it looks like this. So cute. And now we're doing exactly the same in total 11 times. So 10 more times for the entire side. So we're skipping two, one, two, and work our two double crochet cluster, chain one, and then another two double crochet cluster into the same stitch like that. So just keep on doing this to the other side and then skipping the next two and then you have your corner again. So easy peasy, lemon breezy, close with an invisible join to the second stitch and meet me up for the next round thereafter. You don't do that. <laughs> have fun and see you soon. Okay? So we now had this gorgeous kind of romantic heart shaped little edging and we're going to repeat the same steps one more time for our next round which is round number 23. And for round number 23 I'm using the same old pink as I used here which is my color D and I'm just gonna <laughs> go all the way to my chain two space, sorry there we go. And we're going to repeat the same step as we did for our pr previous round corner. So three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets around any given corner space that you wish to begin in. Here we go. One, two, and three. So just like that, exactly at the same time. And now, we are not going directly into our cluster sections, but we are doing a double crochet over the next three stitches. So we are just giving it a little bit more of a stability. So one double crochet, two double crochets, and three double crochets. Here we go. And then we are skipping the next stitch, which is our first DC2 together here. A DC2 cluster and we are making a DC2 cluster around the chain one space in here 
and then we're chaining one and then we're doing another two double crochet cluster like that and then we're repeating the same we're skipping two stitches which are the clusters from the previous one we are only going to work around this chain one space of the clusters never in the clusters themselves okay so just keep on doing your heart shaped sets of clusters all the way till the next side and meet me up there so we should have 11 in total like that so one in each chain space or around sorry around each chain space and then when you come here you simply skip the last little cluster that is already hidden and then you work one double crochet in the last three stitches before the corner so this is all that we do we are doing our corners which are three double crochets chain two three double crochets then we work a double crochet in the next three stitches the three double crochets here then we're skipping the first cluster and around each and every chain one space we do our heart shaped cluster combinations a DC2 together, chain one, DC2 together. And then we are going all the way across. We have 11 in total, skipping the last cluster and working one double crochet in the last three stitches. So go ahead and do that all around and meet me up for round number 24, which is fastening the pedals up here and down here. And yeah, don't worry, we'll make it. So we are going to do the last tricky round of this piece, which is actually the fastening our pedals down to our squared out sections, okay? And don't worry, I will show you, I will guide you through it all. It's not as tricky as it looks. It's just slip stitches placed in good places, okay? <laughs> so we are having one connection point for our sides where we only have one pedal. And then we have two connection points for the sides where we have two pedals. So we will fasten the one pedal side one row higher and then those with two pedals one row lower. I'll show you, okay? I think this might make it a little bit clearer. So what you will do is actually the one side pedal will be attached to our chain one space from the previous round, the sixth uh, cluster chain one space so you can mark that if you want to but I think you can find it while you're working too and then for the two sides we are going actually around round 22 the linen one and we are working in the gap between two cluster sets okay so what you will do is you will attach here the first pedal will go in the space between the second and third cluster from the right and then the second connection point is actually between the ninth and 10th cluster. But I'll show you as we go along, you don't have to mark out these spaces with the stitch markers if you don't want to. I just did that for demonstration. So grab your Khaleesi yarn and let's get going. Okay, so this might feel like a tricky round and I will take it really slow and I'll show you exactly what to do, but it's not as tricky as it feels, okay? So what we will do is you'll find a chain two space from a side that only has one pedal on it, okay? So don't go into any of these, begin here. So with your color A yarn, you are going directly into this chain space from round 20 and making two double crochets, the first one standing. There we go. And now you should go to the sixth cluster combination one, two, three, four, five, six of this side. And around this chain one space, we are simply doing a slip stitch. Ta-da! And then we're going back down and making two more double crochets straight after. No fuss, no chains, no nothing. Just do that. Easy peasy, right? So that is the first side. And for the next part, we are doing a front post double crochet two cluster. As we are well aware of now, we are doing two half finished double crochets work together around the stitch, like that. And then 
Let me just zoom in a little bit. We are skipping our first half double crochet here because that is just very, very much covered by everything. <laughs> so in the second stitch, we are working a single crochet followed by seven more. Okay, so eight in total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There we go. And now we are going to skip the next two stitches, which should be a single crochet and a slip stitch. And instead we are chaining two. And then we are going back to round 13 again. We have been here many times now. And around the center leg of that treble tree together, we are simply working a front post two double crochet cluster. Just like that. And pull through. Chain two. And skip the next two stitches, which is the slip stitch and the single crochet on the other side here. So four stitches are being skipped behind in total. And then we are simply making eight single crochets here. Up to the top again. So and four. Swedish three, <laughs> four, five, six, seven, and eight. Here we go. And now we are going to do as we did prior. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So it's easier to see what I'm doing. We are now at the first pedal of the two on one side. So we are skipping the next stitch, which is the last one before here. And around the front post, we are working a two double crochet cluster front post stitch. <laughs> you know the drill, there we go. And now we are simply doing two double crochets around the next chain space. And now it's slip stitch time again. So we are going into this space that is placed between the second and third cluster of the side. And just do exactly as we did with the first one. So just double check that you are in the right position and then make a tight slip stitch. You see? And then we are repeating the same process again. So we are two, doing two more double crochets into that chain two space. So now we have, as you can tell, a forcing point up here and a forcing point down here. So after that, you are going ahead and again making a front post two double crochet cluster around the next front post, skipping the first stitch behind and then in the next eight, make a single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And do you remember now we are going to skip four stitches in total. So don't work in any of those, but chaining two. And then around the center leg of the treble tree together front post from round 13, make a double crochet front post cluster together. <laughs> a front post double crochet to oh <laughs> why is this so hard to say a front post double crochet to cluster there we go that is the proper that is the proper thing so yeah we're skipping four as i said one two three four and then make eight single crochets up the pedal so one two three four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I'm sorry if it's a little bit tricky to see with this yarn. I hope, I hope you can tell. Uh, if you have any questions, either just look at the written pattern that is linked in the comment section here below, or write us a DM or a comment or something, and I'll help you out, okay? 
Don't worry, we'll get through this. So now we are skipping the next stitch and around the next one, which is the front post double crochet, work a front post double crochet to cluster. There we go. You see, I said it right this time. <laughs> if you say it enough times, it will be right eventually, hopefully. <laughs> and now, sorry, I went ahead here in my own head, but you are doing a corner as usual. So two double crochets, and then it's time for the second attachment point, which was the ninth and tenth cluster. You can also backtrack, so between the second and third from the left. And no matter how you count, you will see where to go. So remember, this is a two side, so we're going around spaces and not in chain spaces. Because we have none to work in, because we have clusters in this. <laughs> so this was Ina's creation. Just do a slip stitch around that space and then carry on again. She came up with this amazing idea of how to attach and ground our petals. And I think it's turning out really, really cute. So now we have done, we have actually done the repeat many, many times. The key point to remember is to attach the one side petal to the outer one. You see, you can reach it with these petals. You can't with these. And then doing the two, attachment points to the row below. And that's it. So just do your corners, attach them, and then eight single crochets, chaining two, binding up here, skipping some stitches, and then work your way back up again. So do that all the way around, fastening your points, and meet me up for round number 25. Okay, so we have come all the way around. All the ends are attached. All the pedals are attached, all the ends are hopefully weaved in. But I thought I were to show you a little bit just how it looks. A little closer. I think this is so incredibly beautiful and I just love how this turned out. Let me show you how to fasten in the ends of this round because that point is a little bit tricky since, yeah, we have attached <laughs> our work. Okay, wait two seconds and I'll show you. So what I'll do is that I snip off the yarn and I do an invisible join to the second stitch, as I always do. It's just a little bit tricky since, yeah, we don't have a lot of wiggle room here. But I'm just going down the third loop and fourth loop, down into the base, very gently, not pulling too much. As you can tell, this looks good already. Just. It's a balance act of doing too loose or too tight, just lagom, as we say in Sweden. Simply just enough to be very good placed will do. And then I'm just working in my ends. I'm just trying to get a solid attachment here because this is what's holding our entire flower in place this round and you don't want that one to go up. So just snip off that end and then as I do with my starting end is that I move in the direction that the yarn wants to. So I'm going actually upwards the first time and then going back down into the same place actually because this will be so far hidden so it will be not be noticeable that there are a lot of attachments down here. So I'm just finding my way through without tearing anything, just working back and forth a few times. And then I'm good. And then I snip this off. So I will do that one or two more times back there, but this is how it will look. Isn't this beautiful? Oh, I'm so excited. I just, I, yeah, I love it. It looks like this to the back. I don't know if I have shown you the back in a while, but it's quite, um, it's quite a covered piece, but all the action is on top. <laughs> so that is amazing. So just fasten in your ends and then let's do the final rounds, okay? Gorgeous. Oh, this is so much fun. Yeah, let's get going. 
For round number 25, we are simply, this I think is the most advanced round <laughs> of the three left. They are really simple ones. This is smooth sailing, okay? So what we will do is start in any corner chain two space with a standing single crochet and followed by another. So two single crochets in total, chain one and two single crochets. Like that. And then I'll just go a little closer. It's hard now when the piece is bigger to really show the overall along with the details. So <laughs> it's just what will happen now. So we will now be working a front post half double crochet around the next seven stitches, okay? So just go ahead and start with the first one. Make sure you go around the body and not just the head. Two. Three. Oh, and with the head, I mean, you can go like this, but I want you to go around the body like this. Four, uh, five, six, and the seventh one will actually be around the cluster. So seven, like that. Just to tighten that up and emphasize it a bit, we placed a front post over that one too. And then we're chaining one, and then we're skipping the chain one space here. So now we will do a front post half double crochet two together over the next two clusters. So you yarn over and go around the first cluster, grabbing the yarn and pulling up a loop. One, two, three. Yarn over again, go around the next one, grab the yarn and pull up a loop. So you will have now five loops on your hook like that and yarn over and pull through all five and just take it step by step if you feel like it's a little bit tricky okay nice and slow chain two skip the chain one space of course and then repeat so we are doing exactly the same going around both our next two clusters five loops on the hook yarn over and pull through them all like that chain two and repeat so go ahead and do that you will do exactly the same here I'll show you when we get here okay so just do the next three so I'm just gonna practically ignore that slip stitch even is there so I'm just finishing my half double crochet work together chaining two moving it to the side and just grabbing the next cluster and repeating my half double crochet procedure okay so just as I said ignore that slip stitch it's not even there you don't notice it okay <laughs> and just carry on to the next side okay so when you have done this nine times we first did the front post half double crochet over the next seven stitches and then we chained one and then the, we did the half double crochet front post work together here chain two and so on we should have nine now before we are finishing off to the final one. So after that repeat, just do a final one work together over here. Ooh, almost, there we go. And then we're simply chaining one instead of two and doing a front post half double crochet over the last seven stitches, the last cluster included, okay? One, two, three, almost, <laughs> four, five, six, and the final seventh. There we go. And then you do your two single crochets, chain one, two single crochets in the chain two space and just repeat for all sides and as i said after this it's smooth sailing so just take your time work your front post half double crochet two together slowly and steadily ignoring the slip stitches here and just going around as you should and you'll be fine and then we have two rounds left round 26 and 27 and then you'll have your finished blooming lotus square and yeah it's so exciting i can't wait to see it finished so yeah 
Keep on the good work and meet me up for round number 26. Okay, so since I'm carrying on with the same color of yarn, I will show you how to carry on with just slip stitching into the first stitch. But if you want to, you can also, of course, close with an invisible join to the second stitch and then begin in the corner chain one space. But I'll show you from here, okay? So what you will do now is either chain start or standing stitch start. And as you know me, I'm doing a standing stitch. So a standing double crochet into the same stitch that you're in, which is the second before the corner, the first of the corner. Uh, and then you're doing a double crochet into the next stitch. And around the chain one space that is a little bit hidden here, you work a double crochet, chain two, double crochet. Like that. And then you're working a double crochet into the next nine stitches. So don't skip that first one after the corner, but go into all of the stitches. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And this should place you right before the next chain one space, okay? So now around the chain one space, we are making a double crochet like that. And then we're doing a front post double crochet around our next stitch. And this is the starting point of our repeat that we will do nine times in total. So we are doing two double crochets around the chain two space. And then repeat. So we are doing a front post double crochet around the next stitch, which is a front post. <laughs> and then two double crochets in the chain space. Do that till the other side and meet me there to show you the rest, okay? So a little fast forward, nine times done, and now we are doing the last front post double crochet here, followed by, as we are mirroring exactly the same as we did here, it will be just a single double crochet here. One double crochet, I mean, nothing else. One double crochet around the chain one space, and then we are doing one double crochet in the next nine stitches. So one, two, and then you'll be to the corner, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then we are at our corner chain one space again. So that is all that you do. Oh my, it's too big for my screen. <laughs> but you work all the way around and you'll get this lovely textured, easygoing border, okay? And so for the next round, which is our final one, we are using the same color. So I'm slip stitching simply into here and I'll show you how to carry on with the very last round as well. So I just closed my round with a slip stitch to my standing double crochet that begun this round. And for the next one, it's really, really simple. I will start with a standing one again, standing double crochet, and then working one double crochet in each stitch till my corner, which is the starting point if you have fastened off and continued on from with another color or something. So in this chain two space, we are working a double crochet. We are chaining two, and then we're doing a double crochet. And you know what? What follows is the most simple thing of all. So we are doing one double crochet in each stitch across, which amounts to 51 double crochets in total per side, plus corners. <laughs> so 53 to be exact with a chain two space in between here too. 
And there we have it, our finished blooming lotus square. Isn't she gorgeous? I gave her a little bit of a blocking in between here. And you can tell it makes a lot of difference. Just a quick block sometimes. But I hope you have had lots and lots of fun, that you have enjoyed this tutorial and that you will have lots and lots of fun with your new gorgeous square, whatever it may turn into. So if you share on social media, please tag us, Ina's Craft, Sisters in Stitch and Crocheted by Tess or use the hashtag Blooming Lotus Square. If you like this tutorial, please give us a thumbs up, leave a little comment below, turn on the notifications and subscribe to our channel because there are new stuff coming every month. And I promise I will share with you in a tutorial further along, or not a tutorial, but in a vlog, what I have done with my squares and all the things you can make from them. Amongst that, mandalas, buntings and pillowcases. So yeah, stay tuned. Until next time.